Hi, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and today we have with us Carolyn Zani. And Carolyn, tell us how you got involved as a shaman. Um, well, I think that if I look back to my childhood, I think that the um, the signs were there very early on. Um, I was uh, a very introverted child. I was quiet. Uh, very conscientious, Aquarian, <laughs> left-handed. <laughs> I was the perfect storm. Um, and being raised Catholic, I was very uh, unaware of anything except my upbringing in the church. So as I began to um, hear about other things, other religions and ways of living and thinking, um, they were foreign to me, but at the same time intriguing. And I can remember hearing a story, I don't recall this experience, but I remember hearing a story about my father's mother buying us a Ouija board for Christmas one year and my mother's mother <laughs> driving it to my other grandmother's house, throwing it on the lawn and, and you know, that was the end of that. So, you know, a very sheltered um, upbringing, um, but then life starts to happen and you start to realize that things aren't always... Um, easily explained. Um, right. I, I had a, I guess what some would call a um, imaginary friend when I was very young. And I know now that that definitely was not an imaginary friend. That was a, a, a companion. And my mom um, was educated. She was a school teacher. She understood that children with imaginary friends were very imaginative and creative children. Um, so she went along with it for quite some time. And then when she had enough, that was it, um, that she put a stop to that. And I had to really start living in that physical world with other people, which was very uncomfortable. <laughs> I would prefer being outside with my horses and that sort of thing. Uh, and little by little, you know, those, those intuitive nudges get chipped away at if no one is there teaching you how to connect with it. And right. Uh, it wasn't until uh, my adult life, when I really began to struggle and go some, through some difficult things, that I realized my, my most trustworthy companions were not living people. Um, but how do you do, explain that to a family who uh, doesn't believe that, or is not outwardly anyway? So I had to go through some, some pretty traumatic things um, to realize that what was happening to me was really a gift. And that's really what I, I try to help people with now in my practice is to show them that the most difficult things are the ones that bring us closer to our divinity, our, uh, our, our truth, speaking our voice, um, and just really uh, connecting with all that is. Right. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. And so once you did do that, you started doing that as a job, huh? Yes. So I uh, actually, very interestingly, I, I ended up writing a book. Um, I didn't really intend to write the book. Uh, a, a very intuitive woman said to me, um, I, I see that you're writing a book. And I said, no, I, I'm not. Um, and she said, no, you are, you are. <laughs> you, you need to write this book. It's very important and people will really connect with it. And it's going to catapult you to a, a totally different career. So I thought she was crazy. And then I learned that she was a card reader. So I said, oh, see, <laughs> she is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that was right along with my beliefs. Um, uh, however, I went home that night and I sat down at my computer just to prove that woman wrong. And uh, the story was there and it just flowed through me 76 nights in a row. And, and at the end, I realized that's, that doesn't normally happen to people, I don't think. Uh, what do I do with this? Um, so eventually, you know, as spirit would have it, <laughs> all the right people sort of came onto my path and, and brought me to my publisher um, who published my book and this journey sort of began. Um, and then I started reading cards myself and that's what I find so funny is that, you know, all of these judgments fall away, all of these fears and all of these, uh, these different opinions that I had, um, that's really my spirit breaking through all of that stuff and, uh, allowing me to be who I'm supposed to be. Wow. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the book is a fiction book? 
Yeah, well, I we call it fiction because that sells better, but I really believe it is my past life. Um, it's about a woman who discovers she has past lives and, and has to deal with that uh, in order to really make the most of this lifetime. Huh. Well, that sounds interesting. <laughs> did you send me a copy of that? I did not. And I went back into my email and I said, I, I'm pretty sure she mentioned something about, you know, sending that to you, but I will send you a copy. I have a copy right here. Okay. Um, this is Piper once and again. And, okay. Um, it is uh it's really been very helpful to a lot of people who believe that they have had experiences um you know with their former self in another time uh, but again are afraid of being called crazy or all of those judgmental words mm -hmm. um, so it's it's been a really wonderful experience neat <laughs> wow yeah that sounds interesting because i've had some bleed through from past lives and i think <laughs> well that's interesting. What, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> exactly. And that's one of the things that I do with my clients is, is a past life regression because sometimes we have things that are just, you know, unexplained in this lifetime. We have a certain draw to a certain place or a certain time period in history. Um, we might even have memories of how to do things and we know we were not taught here in this mm -hmm. lifetime about that. And uh, sometimes people have issues. Um, or even illnesses that just can't be explained. And so during a regression, they can go back to a, a that lifetime that gave them the most difficulty, really see what happened to them and send that part of themselves um, a lot of love and healing. And then over the next few months, they start to uh, have a different experience in, in their current life. Wow, okay, so that would be real helpful, wouldn't it? It is. Huh. Can you tell us an instance where it really helped someone dramatically? Yes. Yeah, so I had this woman come and she was, she was wonderful. She, uh, she was very open. She'd been to therapy, um, traditional talk therapy for a long time for, um, uh, uh, instances of hoarding and not being able to clean her home and, and get rid of things. She was very overweight and she's just generally unhappy. And therapy worked, um, I guess, to a certain degree for her. Um, but then she decided she was going to have a reading with me, and, and she heard about the past life regression. So in her session, she went back to a time where she believes it was uh, 1960s, maybe early 1970s, and that she was in a refugee camp somewhere in Southeast Asia. And that she was uh, a young child, she thinks about two or three, um, could not find her parents and was wandering around looking for things that would be useful to her. Um, she would find a shoe and she would bring it back to the spot where she was and go to try to find another shoe um, or food or something. But every time she came back to that spot, what she had left there was missing, of course. So eventually she, she died um, shortly after that. Um, and in this lifetime, you know, it, it makes sense that all her belongings she wanted to have around her. She wanted to have them close to her. And the overeating could, could definitely be explained from, from that as well. So then in the, the months following the past life regression, she would always send me text updates of the, the weight that she lost and how she cleaned her car out, um, her house and, and everything else, and just feeling very free. So that was a- that was Wow. A, yeah. Cool, yeah. that is cool, okay. <laughs> And what else do you do besides the past life regression and the cards? Uh, so I do different types of readings. I do uh, mediumship um, for people who want to connect with loved ones. Uh, I do a, a lot of general card readings. And I love to be that first person who gives someone a reading um, if they've never had one before. Uh, because I know my style is very compassionate. It's, um, it's very understanding of someone who doesn't really understand how a reading works. Um, and, and I always tell them, you know, we're, we're asking for protection. You're not going to hear anything frightening <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and feel free to ask anything that you want. And so, um, so I do a lot of card readings, but I also, um, do some, what people would call coaching, I suppose, um, or spiritual counseling. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm not terribly sure about those titles. Uh, I just do what I do and, and people, 
um, if they get that benefit from it, uh, that makes me happy. But I do a lot of mentoring. Um, if people are learning about their own intuition and how it works for them, or if they want to learn to read cards, I do that. Um, I do workshops and, and parties and just generally helping people to understand their more to life than maybe what they learned in school. Yeah. Or and do you have an online presence? What, where are you online? Yeah. So I'm on, uh, let's see, I have a website, which is, uh, my name.com. So carolinezani.com. Um, I am also on Facebook as bridging the gap psychic arts. Um, I'm on Twitter as, uh, Piper once again, which is the book. Um, so I'm out there. Okay. So Piper once again on Twitter. Yes. All one word, of course. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cause somebody might want to get a hold of you. And do you do any of these by, by uh, web, like we're doing this interview? Sure. I, I have a lot of people uh, around the country who, um, start with a phone reading and then they they want more and they want to have a face-to-face -face. so this is the easiest way to, to do that yeah yeah it is so much handier well it's just so much easier to be able to see the person sure like I know I just told my grandson why don't you why don't we instead of talking on the phone why don't we talk on webcam so I can see your face yeah that's fun yeah I think it would be too okay so are you writing anything else I, I have started my my second book which is a, a different experience it's definitely not flowing the same way the first one did but I think that's more um, my experience with having to edit the first book <laughs> and that's a kind of experience so um, so I, I think that's kind of holding me back a little, but it's a, it's, it's a different story, same sort of message, but more um, contemporary and uh, with, with some funny twists and turns in there. So that one is uh, Sweet Endings, and I'm, I'm hoping that that one will be uh, finished in the next uh, six months or so. Okay. Wow. <laughs> do you, what else do you do? Do you paint or draw or anything like that? I don't, and, and as a lefty, I feel like I've been cheated because I know a lot of artists are lefties. Um, but uh, I actually, I, so I shouldn't say that. I, I paint furniture. I do a lot of furniture refinishing. Um, oh, okay. And that's fun, but uh, painting pictures, no, that's, that's definitely not for me. Um, I'm traveling this summer, actually, to uh, Paris and Provence to trace the steps of my uh, character in the book. So, um, so I'm very much looking forward to that and seeing how, um, you know, how I, how it feels to be, there yeah. to see if there are any clues from, from myself. And my Is that character. from a, from this book, Piper, once and again? Yes. Yes. So okay, part of so. it is set in Massachusetts and, and part of it is set in 19th century uh, Paris. Nice. That'll be interesting to see if you can uh, recognize things and yes. stuff like that. Yeah, it'll be exciting. I can't wait. Oh, I bet. <laughs> okay. Well, what else would uh, you like to tell us? Uh, I, I think that one of the messages that I, I always try to um, uh, help people understand is that um, and I'm sure that you believe this as well, that we're all really messengers for one another. Um, and I, I hear people tell me all, all the time that, um, you know, they were sitting in a coffee shop and there was a conversation happening between strangers behind them. And they were sure that the conversation was, was about them or for them. And I say, yes, <laughs> yes, it was. Um, people deliver messages in all different ways. Um, and it's just really important to be aware um, I think that there are languages that the universe uses to, to speak to us that if you're not taught, uh, you know, it, it can literally fly right by your face, right? So mm -hmm. the, the bird that flies by, um, you know, the deer that jumps in front of your car on the way to work, all of those animals have messages for us. And if we just really connect with that um, and understand that the universe is speaking to us all the time, I think people will have um, a little bit less stress in their lives 
uh, and, and that's really what I, I try to do. I, I have development groups and I, I help people understand that, you know, the, um, the coworker with the, with the sharp tongue is, a, is really a lesson for us. What, what do we need to learn from that? So people are constantly, you know, uh, delivering messages. We just have to be very aware of it. And understand that it's happening. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, always, I always tell people, remember to remember, you know, you've got to have a way of, of making yourself become aware in the moment um, of what's happening. Because sometimes people will say, oh, I saw, you know, two, two, two on the clock again. And I'll say, okay, so what were you thinking about at that moment? And they say, I don't know, I, I was so excited to see the repeating numbers that I forgot what I was thinking about. Um, but it's, it's really about just, you know, getting into the practice of realizing that the the messages are coming through the lyrics on the radio, they're coming through the, the numbers on the clock or the truck that drives by you on the highway and has a, you know, certain message on the side of, of the, the truck that um, the universe is constantly speaking to us. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> okay, well, anything else? Uh, I, I don't think so. Um, okay, well, this is probably a very good interview then. Most people can't sit through a long one anyways. <laughs> so I hope that this message gets through to all the people that it's meant to get through to. Excellent, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, and I wanna invite you to join our, our um, group at shamanicarts.studio. Okay, most definitely. Okay.